next step on the agenda is the selection of committees for the buffet supper. Uh, Mabel Randall will be in charge of fruit cocktail. Vera, you are cream chicken. <laughs> and uh, Kathy, your dessert. I'd suggest apple pie. Oh, but my husband likes lemon meringue. <laughs> lemon meringue? Ooh, but meringue gets so soggy sitting around. Make it apple pie. Now, wait a minute, Martha. Let's be parliamentary about this. I make a motion, it's lemon meringue. All right. I have a meringue motion on the floor. <laughs> well, let's call for a show of hands and we'll vote on it. Oh, oh. hello, Mr. Williams. Hello, hello there. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Hello, darling. Hey, Dead Mother's meeting? Uh, yes. right. Oh. Go right ahead. Don't let me interrupt you. All right. Now, all those in favor of apple pie, please raise their hands. <laughs> Let's see, that's one, two, three, four apple pies. All those in favor of lemon meringue? <laughs> One meringue. Well, that does it. Apple pie is it. Now, for the last item, the distribution of raffle books to the various dens so the Cubs can start selling the tickets. Oh, and don't forget, mothers, tell your boys that the one who sells the most tickets wins a bicycle. Donated by Shriver's Bicycle Shop. That should be quite a good incentive, hmm? All right, now, um, Vera, how many will you take for your den? Well, now, let's see. I'd say... About five books for each boy. Five? That mm -hmm. sounds just about right. Good. Mabel? Same, and I'll take Edna's quota, too. Good. Kathy? Oh, I'll go along with the crowd. All right, that's five for you. I'll take five each for the boys in my den, all except for my son, Tommy. I think that uh, he can handle 25 for a starter. 25? <laughs> yes. You know how aggressive he is. Yes, he is quite a boy at that. Mm. Gets it from Tom Sr. Like father, like son, I always say. <laughs> Honey, why don't you speak up? I mean, our son is no wallflower either, you know. Tommy can handle 25 books. Rusty can handle the same amount. 25 for Rusty? Oh! Excuse me, what does oh, 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 mean? Oh, well, I mean 25 books for Rusty. That's ridiculous. You're absolutely right. Make it 35. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Williams. We'll start Rusty off with 35 books. Thank you. That'll be fine. Kathy, dear, you will send back all the unsold books as soon as possible. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I think my Tommy may need them. Look, Mrs. Greenson, there'll be no unsold books. My son happens to be a go-getter, too. He'll be the one who'll be coming back for more books, I assure you. I just hope he's careful with his new bike. Oh, if anybody will be riding a new bike, I'll bet it'll be my Tommy. How'd you like to put your money where your mouth is? <laughs> We're conducting an orderly meeting here. That's no way to talk to our chair lady. I, I, I apologize, Mrs. Greenson. I was out of order. That's better. I make a motion you put your money where your mouth is. <laughs> Fine. Thank you very much. Very nice. Who were you talking to? To the janitor, honey, about a place to put Rusty's new bike. What bike? The one he's gonna win. <laughs> oh, honey. What? He just got the tickets this morning. Aren't you being a wee bit premature? Look, sweetheart, if there's anything to this saying, like father, like son, I'm not being premature. Honey, I was raised in a neighborhood where you had to compete just to stay alive. I mean, this is just a little ticket-selling contest here. Rusty is my boy. I bet you two to one before the day is out, he comes back for more books. Oh, Danny. I bet he sold half his quota right now. Oh. Hi, Dad. Hi, Hello, Kathy. son. Hello, honey. Kathy, hmm? where did you put those raffle books? What'd I tell you? He's back for more books already. How many have you sold? None. I forgot to take them with you me. You forgot? <laughs> They're right in that drawer there, Rusty. Rusty, how could you forget them? Get on the ball, boy. How do you expect to win the bike? I don't. Tommy Greenson will win the bike. What? He wins everything. Come back here. What kind of an attitude is that? Come on. Where's the initiative? Where's that Williams drive? Where's my son? I'm right here. Not when you talk like that, you're not. My son is a go-getter. My son is a winner. A person who overcomes all odds, no matter how great. And wins over all. That's my son. No, that's Mr. Greenson's son. <laughs> Russell, how can you give up without a struggle? Don't you want the bike? Sure, but I got a birthday coming up soon, and I thought... Figured your old man would buy you one. Well, I'm not gonna buy you one. 
I I'm disappointed, Russ. So am I. <laughs> I'd get a bike for my birthday. Guess I'll go fix lunch. Wait a minute. Go fix lunch? How can you think of lunch at a time like this? We have a son who doesn't realize how important it is to be a winner, and that's all you can say. I think I'll go fix lunch. Well, if you really want my opinion, I think it's just as important for Rusty to learn that everybody can't win. What about the boys who come in second and third? Second and third? I'm betting them to win in your talking place and show. What kind of thing is that? <laughs> Look, the boy's character's being molded now. Oh, Danny, why don't you admit you're much more concerned about your own pride being hurt than you are about Rusty's character? Is that so? Mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you something, Mrs. Williams. What? Why don't you go fix lunch? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Look, Russ, I know everybody can't win. I understand that some guys gotta come in second, some guys gotta come in third. But at least the fellows who come in second and third try to win. You're not even trying. Well, gee, Daddy, everybody knows Tommy Greenson always wins everything. He's just one of those guys, that's all. What kind of guy is he one of those of? Who always wins, that's what guys he's one of those of. Don't be smart, huh? <laughs> Tommy Greenson wins because he tries, and he tries hard. You, you give up without a struggle. You go through life like that, you'll never succeed at anything. Gee, Look, where? sweetheart, there's more involved here than just a raffle ticket selling contest. Your whole life is going to be a series of contests. You don't want to be a failure in life, do you? Well, gee whiz, Daddy. I don't expect to keep selling raffle tickets for a living. You want me to be proud of you, don't you? Sure. Well, then make me proud of you. I wasn't a quitter when I was your age, and you mustn't be a quitter either. You gotta keep saying to yourself, I'll sell the most raffle tickets. I will win the bike. You say it over and over until you believe it. You mean if I say, keep saying it, I'll believe it? Of course. Now, repeat after me. I will sell the most raffle tickets. I will sell the most raffle tickets. I will win the bike. I will win the bike. Attaboy. Attaboy. All right. All right. Cut it out! We'll sell the tickets. That you, Russ? Yeah, Dad. I've been waiting for you, boy. Well, how many tickets did you sell? You mean today? Yeah, today. Well, that depends. How many are you going to buy? Well, I'll, I'll buy 12. 12? Yeah. Wow. How many, how many have you sold? Including the ones you just bought? Including the ones I just bought. Twelve. <laughs> you, you didn't sell any? Sure, I just sold you twelve. I can't understand. Come here, come here. Show me how you went about it. But I'm hungry. You'll eat after a while. Now, show me how you went about it. You, you sell me a raffle ticket. But... No buts about it. Now, look. You go outside, ring the doorbell. I'll answer the door. Now, you sell me a raffle ticket. You understand? And, and remember, you got to have courage. You stand up there. Never let the customer know you're afraid of them. You know what I mean? Yes, I've got to stand there, look them straight in the eye, and not let them know my friend. That's my boy. Come on. Come on. Let's practice. All right. Anytime you're ready. Okay. Ring the doorbell. All right. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. Come on. Oh, what's the matter? I lost my nerve. Holy. <laughs> in your own house, you lost your nerve. No wonder you couldn't sell any tickets. What kind of a thing is that? You lost your nerve. Now, come on. I'll be the lady of the house, and you sell me your raffle ticket. I can't. Why not? You don't look like a lady. <laughs> okay, Stanislavski, I'll look like a lady. Go ahead. Don't look like a lady. You gotta draw pictures for the kids, so I'll look like a lady. Don't look like a lady. Bringing up the children, are you God, you're crazy? <laughs> okay, now I look like a lady. Madam? <laughs> What's the matter? You're the silliest looking lady I Cut it out! <laughs> now, come on, sell the tickets. Excuse me, madam. Yes, young man? I'm selling raffle tickets. Mm -hmm. Do you want any? Well, no. Thanks anyway. Wait a minute! <laughs> <laughs> no wonder you didn't sell any tickets. Who would buy it? That's not salesmanship. That's you just defeated from the very beginning. But gee whiz, nobody else bought any. Why should you? I'll show you how to sell a raffle ticket. Now, you be the lady of the house. I'll be you. Watch the charm, how I come in and I look the beautiful house or pay okay. compliments. Watch. All right, now watch. Ready. How do you do? Are you the lovely lady of the house? Sorry, I have a boy of my own who's selling him, too. <laughs> What are you 
doing? That's what the lady did to me. What am I going to do with you, Russ? What am I going to do with you? That's the way you're going to be when you grow up? Well, gee whiz, Daddy. Who says I'm going to grow up to be a salesman? Sweetheart, no matter what you grow up to be, you got to be a salesman. You have to sell yourself. That goes if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a musician, or anything. You got to sell yourself. Why do you suppose people laugh at me on the nightclub floor? They laugh at the jokes. They, they enjoy my songs. Why? It's not because my jokes are better than the next fellas or that I've got a great voice, which heaven knows I haven't. It's, it's because I've sold myself first. And once I've sold myself, they'll buy anything from me. They buy anything. Yeah. <laughs> We can't keep up with our kids today. It's impossible. I can't, I swear, I don't, I don't believe. I do not believe that my mother and father raised 10 children. How did they do it? I've got only three that drive me crazy. <laughs> kids today, they know so much. They know too much, little monsters. <laughs> I mean, to stay ahead of your kids today, you gotta be a walking book of knowledge. <laughs> I know my daughter, Terry, is now talking about going to college. I've had only one year of high school. She speaks to me through an interpreter. <laughs> Boy, how much you have to know to, to, to keep up with your kids. My, my folks were simple, normal people, stay-at-homes. They didn't have to know what was going on two blocks away. Today, we got to know what's going on all over the world. I remember my mother couldn't tell me how to get to Coney Island. Me, I got to tell my kid how to get to the moon. <laughs> Tommy Cage, electronics, spaceships, rocket ships, satellites. Everybody wants to go to outer space. You know, I wish they would. Maybe we'd have a little peace down here. <laughs> I mean, in the old days, life was simpler. People were relaxed. Today, everybody's in a big hurry to die. I remember when I was a kid, Barney Oldfield set a world speed record. He astounded the nation. He drove a racing car 60 miles an hour. Try going 60 miles an hour today on one of your modern highways. You get pinched for obstructing traffic. <laughs> Wait till you see the latest cars. Air brakes and unbreakable windshields. 600 horsepower. Wait till you see them. Next year, you're going to drive 180 miles an hour and stop on a dime. Then you press a button and a putty knife scrapes you off the windshield. <laughs> this they call progress. <laughs> Look at the food. Who enjoys a meal anymore? They got powdered eggs, powdered milk, powdered soup. They don't serve your meal anymore. They blow it at you. <laughs> I don't know. Our folks had it a lot easier than we did. See, my dad accentuated the positive with a club about that long. <laughs> and I think that's a cue for a song. Earl, let's have a song here, huh? Got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You got to spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum. Have faith or pandemonium liable to walk upon the scene. To illustrate my last remarks, there's Joan in the whale and Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Oh, they said we got the accent. She weighed the positive, healing my need the negative. Latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, knock off the negative. Come on the positive. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. dedicate that song to my son, who incidentally is here tonight. My boy has been accentuating the negative here of late. <laughs> See, I've been trying to teach him some salesmanship.
He hasn't sold one raffle ticket since the contest started. And I thought that maybe tonight you folks could help my boy to believe in himself. Put the lights up, will you, Charlie? Uh, stop yawning and come on up here. This is my boy, Rusty. And uh, uh, why don't you tell the folks what you're doing, son? Go ahead, don't be nervous now. Well, uh... Yeah? I'm selling raffle tickets, I'll and... I'll take two. Well... I'll take four. Yeah. Hey, give me I'll some tickets, two. kid. Oh. Me too. I'll take a whole book full. <laughs> well, go ahead. Start... That's hey, wonderful, Russ. Over right over there. This fellow will take one, too. Fine, well, isn't that okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll make change for some one more ticket. Rush. Rush, hurry now. We'll be late. <laughs> I think it's about the tenth time he's counted his money. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, come on, honey. Get off it, will you? I told you how I felt about it last night, and I haven't changed my mind. You ought to be excited, for heaven's sake. The kid sold a lot of tickets, 31 books. He sold them, or you sold them? What did I have to do with it? You saw him sell them. Oh, yes, I saw him sell them after you made a big sales pitch for him. All right, so I helped them a little bit. Is that such a crime? All parents help their kids sell things. How many parents have a captive audience to sell raffle tickets to by the gross? <laughs> what kind of crack is that? Oh, Danny, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Well, how do you like this? I have to apologize for doing something for my son? Danny, are you doing it for your son, or are you doing it for your own ego as his father? My ego as his father has nothing to do with it. I did it to prove to him that he doesn't have to take a backseat to anybody. I had to prove to him that he could sell more tickets than Tommy Greenson. And all you've succeeded in proving is that Danny Williams could sell more tickets than Tommy Greenson. Look, sweetheart, all Rusty lacked was confidence, but now he's got it. How do you know that? I know it because the, the last five books of tickets he sold all by himself on his own to absolute strangers, and that's the truth. Well, at least that's something. Oh, Danny, I, I don't mean that you shouldn't help Rusty. But to help a boy too much is a big mistake. Look, sweetheart, our son's future is far too important for me to be splitting hairs about whether I help him too much or not. Besides, you, you sold a lot of tickets. It's for a worthy cause. Hey, hello. Oh, hi. I'm Tommy Greenson. Oh, hi. oh, hello, Tommy. Come on in. Hello, Mr. Williams. Is it all right if I go to the meeting with you folks? Oh, why, sure, of course. Uh, aren't your folks going, son? Oh, of course they are. His mother's the chair lady. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. But Dad had to take her over early. So I wondered if it'd be all right if I went with you folks. Why, that's fine, Tommy. Why don't you sit down a minute? Rusty is still dressing. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll set the train of tickets in, eh? I sure am. <laughs> I figure I got a good chance to win the bike, too. Oh? I'm only two tickets short of 30 books. <laughs> two, two tickets short of 30 books? Hey. Looks like somebody else's father's got some pretty good connections, too. <laughs> uh, I say that, that that's a lot of tickets to sell. <laughs> sure been a big job. You know, I had to get up at 6 o'clock every morning since the contest started. 6 in the morning? What for, Tommy? To sell tickets. From 7 to 8, I stand in the subway and try and get people on their way to work. Of course, you don't sell too many that way, but if you do it every morning, it adds up. Then after school, I go to all the stores, and I try and get people coming out of the movies. Sure been a big job. Never worked so hard in my life. <laughs> Didn't your father help you? Oh, sure. He helped me. Oh, wow. <laughs> he bought two tickets from me. <laughs> How'd Rusty do? R R Rusty did p p pretty good. <laughs> I, uh, I better go up and see what's keeping the boy. <laughs> Hi, Danny. Hi. Say, you know, I've got so much money here, we should hire an armored car. Yeah. Let's go. Wait a minute, Russ, wait a minute. Look, uh, Tommy Greenson is downstairs. He, he's going to the meeting with you. He is? Yeah. Hey, did you find out how many tickets he sold? Yeah, yeah, I found out. How many? Well, he, he sold two less than 30 books. And I sold 31 books. Yeah. Oh, boy, I've won the bike, Daddy. I've won it. 
Have you, Russ? Sure, there are 10 tickets to a book, so I've sold 12 more tickets than he has. Oh, boy, I've won the bike. Boy, that was a great idea you had taking me to the nightclub. Yeah, yeah, it was a great idea. Let's go. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why? I, I, I thought maybe you'd, uh, well, I, I thought maybe you'd like to hear how, how Tommy Greenson sold, sold his tickets. Well, what's the difference? I beat him. Yeah, yeah, I know you'd beat him, but I, I think you ought to hear it anyhow. Yeah, it's quite interesting. You know, that silly kid got up every morning at 6 o'clock, two weeks straight, stood out in front of the subways catching the people on the way to work, and, and he, he stopped people in the street, stood in front of the movie houses, and went into all the stores, and selling tickets one by one, hour after hour, day after day, for two solid weeks. He wound up selling only 12 tickets less than you did. Can you imagine how many tickets he would have sold if his father had a nightclub audience full of people to buy books for? Oh, gee whiz, Daddy. All I want to know, sweetheart, is do you honestly believe you're winning this bike fair and square? But the last five books I sold all by myself. I know, I know. I'm not forgetting that. You deserve credit for it, too. But, I mean, do you really think you, you, you sold enough books all by yourself? Could you give me an advance on my allowance? <laughs> what for? Well, I've been selling tickets to everybody else, and I don't have any for myself. After all, I might win the portable TV or something. You mean everything I've just said to you has gone into one ear, not the other? Haven't you clobbered him enough? What do you want to do, rub his nose in it now? Never mind, you'll get your allowance and money when it's due, not a minute before. Then how am I going to buy enough tickets from Tommy so he'll win the bike? Are you sure you're only 10 years old? <laughs> Here. Here's double your allowance. Buy a lot of tickets. Gee, thanks, Daddy. Come on, let's go. Hey, King Solomon. Yeah? Come here. Ow, what do I do now? <laughs> Nothing. I, I just found out what you're going to be when you grow up. What's that? A man. Naturally. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Russ, I don't want to make a big thing out of this. I just want you to know I'm, I'm very proud of you. Thanks, Daddy. And do you want me to be proud of you, too? You know I do. Then buy me a bicycle for my birthday. Oh, come on. <laughs> I thought Tommy Greenson won the bike. He did. Well, where did you get it? Well, you know the tickets I bought from Tommy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of them won the portable TV, so I traded Tommy for the bike. <laughs> <laughs> you traded Tommy? Sure, he's already got a bike. The one he won last year for selling the most magazine subscriptions. Well, isn't that wonderful? Hey, it's a beaut, too. Mm -hmm. Look at the hand brakes and everything. Oh. You know, this has been a most profitable experience for the Williams family. Rusty got himself a real good bike, and I certainly learned a real good lesson. I learned a lesson, too. What's that? Why kill yourself selling raffle books? All you gotta do is buy the winning ticket. <laughs>